Hello and welcome to Terrace Daily Insight and the Open Door. My name is Mitchell and it is Monday, May the 27th, 2013. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. And uh, the, res the uh, intention I set with the scrolling screen before is for you. I hope that you say that in first person and absorb it and know that this video is set with the intention that it would help raise your vibration than the vibration of the world as we know it right now. So thank you for joining in. I'm going to dive right in as always. A little teaching of the tarot cards uh, overview of the day and then I'll just open the door um, again. I'll leave it open because it's open right now and um, see what happens in the second segment of this video. So our card for today is the Devil card. Very interesting today. So um, our devil card, first of all, is the number 15, which boils down to number six. So six is a very kind of passive, receptive, feminine number. A lot of people get freaked out when this card comes up. It is a major arcana card, which means, you know, kind of big destiny moments, if you will. Um, and I will say, uh, I, this is like a, an insert that... Um, I will probably use the word destiny a little bit more now from because of the compatibility spread that I uh, have created over the weekend. And it's basically a compatibility tarot card spread for love. And there were five cards going in a clockwise circle and then four cards going up at the side. Those four cards represent, um, you know, where you and your mate or friend or loved one can and will go, the growth that you would have. And they said in that spread, if a major card falls in that area, that's the intention, that it was a destiny moment and that you and that person were supposed to have met. So I really, really like that. So as I'm starting to read more um, over the last couple of days and even last night on the Blog Talk radio show, when a major card popped up, it just resonated really loud and clear that this was supposed to happen. This was a destiny moment. The minor cards are pretty much more of the free will. Um, and uh, you always have free will, but a destiny card is one that you probably, if you don't take it now, you're going to take it next lifetime or the lifetime after trying to get to that lesson that you've set up. So all that being said, the devil card here is often about, when I do readings, about things that are kind of holding you back, have you chained down, tied down, um, maybe being stuck in a, a marriage that you feel lifeless and purposeless, uh, maybe addicted to some sort of drugs and you can't break that habit, or being at a job and just too fearful to leave it knowing that there's something better for you. So whatever it is, it's about kind of holding you back, being stuck, not a lot of movement going on. As you can see in the devil's hand, he's got the time, um, the, the hourglass, <clears throat> and it's kind of on its side, which like the hangman, which is number 12, it's about a moment where you're kind of just paused and kind of stuck. So there's a couple places through the major arcana where you get stuck, you get stopped, you get paused, if you will. Um, the wheel card, believe it or not for me, does that as well because it's just like you're running in place. You're running in place, so you're in quicksand trying to move, but you can't do it. So message for today, and this is what I'm hearing from uh, my, my team, uh, is look for the areas. There's subtle ones is what I'm hearing. Look for the subtle areas in your life where you are still just a little bit stuck, just a little bit trapped just a little bit fearful of moving forward or breaking free from something. And um, I just see you releasing the chains that are holding you and moving forward. So I'm um, hearing that today's a good day for that energy coming off this full moon and all that, being a holiday weekend. It's a great time to really release that energy and move forward. So there's your message for today. Move forward from those things that have been holding you back. And again, they're subtle ones. They're not, I don't think they're big ones like addiction, like being trapped in a marriage for 20 years. Um, I think they're smaller ones, and you'll know what they are when they pop up. I set the intention that your guides would give you clear um, points of what they are and then offer you and show you, if you're listening, um, easy and quick and simple ways to get out and break free before they become giant major blocks that you have to overcome. So all that being said, I thank you, and I'm going to jump to the open door. See you in a moment. 
Thank you for jumping here or staying tuned in. This is The Open Door and I am still Mitchell and um, don't really have any like topical things to talk about. Uh, I believe this is more about like spiritual teaching. Um, this is about trusting your heart, uh, knowing what's true for you at this moment. And I think a lot of you like me, we have our doubts about things that we know to be true. Uh, I'm hearing that it's not always wise to share, you know, if you know someone's like, just example, cheating on their spouse, you know, you may just be given that information so that you can raise your vibration when you're around those people or the friend who's being cheated on, et cetera, et cetera. Not necessarily that you got to step in and say something. My, my personal belief and background of stepping in, I probably 95% of the times I do not say something if, unless I'm asked. Uh, there's very few times where I will actually step in, and that's if, if my guides are telling me very directly, you know, this is something you need to step in and say. But I will often ask three times, you know, and if every single time, one, two, three, I get a yes, a yes, a yes, you need to do something, then I will. And that's kind of something, that's my intention I set up with them. If this is one of those times where I need to cross what I would call a line of, of ethics as a psychic and just as allowing people to have their own journey and their own path, then three times I will step in. But like I said, maybe 5% of the time it's ever come up. So, you know, trust the knowing, but whether you, whether you act on it or how you act on it is, uh, the, I think, the biggest part, um, you, you know, even I'm trying to think of a, a mild example. I get such drastic examples in my head, but if you see someone who you know um, is making a big mistake with a relationship, that may be their, you know, a destiny card that they need to step into and learn a life lesson. They they might be repeating a life script, as uh, Sherry Cortland, our guest on the Blog Talk Radio Show, said last night. You may be, you do want to be the one that has to make them repeat a life script once again in the next lifetime. Um, so maybe it's just time to keep your mouth shut. So, um, but our relationship villains pop up all over the place because we've, we've agreed with them to come into our lives to help us create and find um, growth, expansion, or just simply an experience. Because uh, for me, a lot resonates with we are simply here to experience all that we can and take that experience back to source because um, my belief is source can't experience that if source is all that is so to take a moment for source God to separate into little individual us's um, and then experience things and bring it back um, it's almost like we're we're, we're flying out of the space and grabbing an experience and bringing it back to the collective so that resonates with my head today. Next week, that may completely change. Um, and that's the beauty of growth and evolution and enlightenment. Um, I, you know, I used an example the other day. It's, it, it, it's even a bizarre concept, but I know there was a time when everybody thought the planet and the world was flat. I can't even conceive the thought of it being flat because I've seen pictures of it being round. But then I know one day we're all going to kind of go, oh, it is just a big old matrix illusion. And right now I can think about that and it makes a little sense because I've seen a movie or two where it talks about that and all I study and what, what resonates in here. So it resonates in here, but eventually it's going to come out and we're going to see the physical, physical ramifications of knowing that this is all an illusion. So all that being said, um, you know, just start here's the here's the bottom line develop a relationship with your guides resonate in the highest possible frequency that you can and that's your protection um, if you still feel the need to protect yourself with white light and put it around you that's fine whatever your belief system is mine is that when I resonate as high as I possibly can continue to take the high road then there is no room for that denser less limiting negative darker energy to step in uh, so when people talk about you know even you know somebody being attached to them or being possessed by them 
I completely understand it and get it. It's th th those things are not necessarily in my vocabulary, but I completely understand it. Um, and those things were very much in my vocabulary in the past. But uh, it's just it's like I've learned a new language, and it's not different or wrong or right. It's just now for me, it's like I am just vibrating as high as I can, and those things cannot get to me unless I drop my energy down to them. Um, good example, the other day I'm driving to work, someone pulled up behind me and boy, I could feel their energy behind me. And they got in a lane beside me and my lane goes straight, but their lane was supposed to turn left. Well, they didn't realize that. So they continued to move forward and it was only in one lane that we can go into. And boy, I stepped down into ugly place and was pointing my finger in the mirror at them and going, you were wrong, you were wrong. And as and then and I, I actually saw them take a moment and realize they were wrong. And and I had this conversation with myself, not with my guides, with myself. And I said, wow, Mitch, how'd that feel? You were right. Did that feel good that you were right? That you made that frustration? You know, it was just like, and boy, for like three minutes, and I didn't beat myself up over it, but for about three minutes I said, I am sorry for, to that person. I said, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. And it took me just about three minutes to shake that feeling where I probably would have held on to it more like about an hour. Because even now when I remember it, I don't feel it. But a lot of times when I remember when I stepped into that ugly place of lower, denser energy, I can feel it again. But um, so, so I got a good old lesson, a reminder of what it's like to step into that negative, limiting energy. Um, uh, so anyway. I'm done talking. Have a wonderful day for many of you here in the U.S. You're celebrating Memorial Day. And I feel the need to say hello to Ireland. Um, on, my, uh, on my website, I just keep seeing so many uh, clicks from people over in Ireland. Hello, how are you? Um, uh, I think I've got Irish in me. <laughs> Last name is Moore and Osborne. And I was kind of red, red beard and green eyes. So um, whatever the connection is over there, I thank you for checking things out, watching videos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I say to you all, namaste. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye. Talk to you tomorrow.